Hello everybody, my name's Chris Chris. I'm from a YouTube channel, Boxing Bros UK. Give us a, a check out when you're free. And today I'm playing a game called Last Man Standing. So one's been already done at heavyweight. I'm doing it at um, middleweight today. It's any fighter from any era. And we're going to start with Sugar Ray Robinson versus Marvin Hagler. So, obviously, they're both elite fighters, but I'm going to have to say Sugar Ray just because he had so many tools. He was fighting 15 rounders and just could, could, could do everything, pound for pound legend, like, <coughs> of any time. So, Hagler's out. Next person, Bernard Hopkins, the alien, <laughs> versus Sugar Ray. Again, it's going to have to be Sugar Ray, e even though, like, Bernard Hopkins, good fighter. Spoiling tactics, all that, but yeah, I think Sugar Ray would just have too much room, too tough, hits too hard, too agile, just had a bit of everything. He can do anything that Bernie can do better. Next person is Jake LaMotta. <laughs> Jake LaMotta, they actually fought about, I feel they had about four fights or three fights, and Jake LaMotta won one, won one, and Sugar Ray Robinson won, won the other three, so obviously it's going to be Sugar Ray again. <laughs> The next person is Sugar Ray Robinson versus Sugar Ray Leonard. Like, this is a tough one because they're quite similar, actually, because Sugar Ray Leonard was a hell of a fighter, could do everything, could, could swing it out in the pocket, stick and move. But I just think that where Sugar Ray was, he was just, he was just a bit, he was a bit tougher. He was, he was definitely a bit tougher. And I think, and I think he'd win. So Sugar Ray Robinson. The both called Sugar Ray. Next one is Canelo Alvarez. <laughs> so Canelo Alvarez at middleweight. He, he never really had. He had a few fights at middleweight, but the main ones was against Golovkin, and I don't really think that he won the first one. So I'm not going for Canelo to beat Sugar Ray Robinson. No way. <laughs> so Canelo off. <laughs> And Sugar Ray still on. Miguel Cotto, good fighter, good fighter. But again, he moved up to uh, middleweight from light middleweight, so he wasn't really a natural middleweight. And um, yeah, Sugar Ray would have just dis dismantled him easy. So <laughs> the next <laughs> next one, Sugar Ray Le Sugar Ray Robinson, sorry, against Minter, a British former undisputed fighter, excellent fighter, good fighter. He's a great fighter, but um, unfortunately for him, he never really got to fight any decent, decent fighters. But he's still undisputed, still a great fighter. And then he met Marvin Hagler and lost. So I'm going to go with Sugar Ray Robinson again on this one. Just he was, he was, he was the next level all time great, equal to Muhammad Ali in my eyes. If you're going for a greatest of all time. So next one, Sugar Ray Robinson. <laughs> versus Roy Jones Jr. Can't be touched. This one, I'm going to have to say, Roy Jones Jr. at middleweight was, for me, in my, my opinion, unbeatable. He could, he had everything. Like, he had an unorthodox style as well. Like, he could, I'm sorry, I thought the screen's rattling a bit. An unorthodox style, he relied on his reflexes, pull counters. He could hit hard, he was fast, everything. And I just think that he would have been too much, too much for Sugar Ray. With his, with his reflexes and his unorthodox style, Sugar Ray would have, have never fought anybody like Roy Jones Jr. in his life. So I'm going to go Roy Jones Jr., Sugar Ray, off. <laughs> so now it's Roy Jones Jr. versus Nigel Benz. So it's quite funny, actually, that this has come up because after Ben beat McLennan, he was uh, he was supposed to fight Roy Jones Jr. But this is this would have been that super middleweight, not middleweight. But um, yeah, Nigel Ben, tough fighter, legend. But Roy Jones, that middleweight, like I said, I thought I thought he was unbeatable. And my, Nigel Ben, he was ferocious, but he was a bit bit chin, not chinny, but he was susceptible to getting knocked out because he was a bit wild sometimes. So yeah, Roy Jones for that one. Nigel Ben off. Eubank Senior. This one, I'm not even explaining myself because 
Eubank Senior was supposed to fight Roy Jones, and he and he ducked him, and he actually admitted it when they had a um, super middleweights around the table. He even admitted that he ducked Roy Jones, that he didn't want to fight him. So I'm not even going to just Eubank Senior even knew that he wasn't ever going to beat Roy Jones Jr. So Senior off. Gerald McLennan versus Roy Jones Jr. He was he was a beast. He was a beast at middleweight. He was a beast. So, um, but I still just Roy Jones can't be touched. Can't be touched at middleweight. That was his. That was his prime. That was him at his best when he's firing on all cylinders, young, fit, like so. Yeah, he would have beat McLennan. It would have been a tough fight. Roberto Duran. He only had. A few fights at middleweight. He wasn't really great at middleweight, to be honest. So, Roy Jones Jr. again. Triple G versus Roy Jones Jr. Um, Triple G, obviously, good you know, a good fighter, but Roy Jones Jr. would have picked him apart because he just, he's just got that one style, Triple G, you know, cutting the ring off, going forward. So, yeah, Roy Jones would just picked him off easy. The last one, Tommy the Hitman Hearns. Versus Roy Jones Jr. So both very similar, both athletic, but um, Tommy Ernst got was susceptible, like Nigel Ben, to getting knocked to getting knocked out because he was a bit wild. He liked a bit of a tear up, and I just yeah. So Roy Jones Jr. Jones Roy Jones Jr. the last man standing, and he's he's the winner for me out of all those fifteen names. He would be staying on and not losing. 